What's the word, y'all? The NBA regular season is close to over, man. It's so weird to say. I'm so excited for playoff basketball, but it's so weird to say that this season is almost over. I feel like it flew past, man. Just, just feels like just yesterday the Bulls were good. And, and a lot of things have changed. <laughs> a lot of things have changed. Um, and once we get to this part of the season where it's like 10 games left of the NBA season, um, I start to take my NBA award ballots so very seriously. I'm not a dude that has an official vote because why would this random YouTuber have one? But I deal with it as if I did have a vote because I understand the stakes involved in all of these things, right? And I just dream of one day I get a call from Adam Silver and he gives me an official ballot and I can send him back a resume of my NBA award uh, winners from every single season, whether it be in video form or written form. And this is the reason reason why this is my MVP and this is the reason why this guy's second this is my sixth man of the year because there are some people let's be honest there are some people that have a war or votes that don't watch the game as ba basketball as closely as me and you there's some people that don't take it as seriously as me and you like every single year you can look at the ballots and be like why this person get a vote who the hell who voted for this person? I'm not that dude you know what I'm saying? I think about things. I go into statistics. I, I really take this stuff seriously. And then every single season, once I get to this point and take a thing seriously, I'm reminded of how very difficult it is to differentiate uh, winners versus losers when it comes to this award. And this year might be harder than the last because I feel like we're like two months left of the season. Jokic had wrapped up the MVP award last season. This year, I'm still flip-flopping, y'all. I, I don't know who it is. I think it's still a three-man race. But I, honestly, it's probably a two-man race between the two centers up top. Um, whether it be Jokic or Embiid, every single award right now is up for grabs, or not up for grabs, but like I haven't made my definite answers just yet, except for six man of the year. Spoiler alert, it's Tyler Hero. But like rookie of the year, you can make a conversation for Cade Mobley and Scotty Barnes. Um, defensive player, don't even get me started on defensive player of the year. There's like seven people on my ballot. Nobody jumps off the page for me right now. So it's, it's just so very difficult. And I woke up this morning and there was a lot of conversation, whether it be on my timeline or my mentions, about Devin Booker. And the MVP candidacy, and I'm here to talk about that, or one of the things we're talking about. This is a hodgepodge of just thoughts, or you know how this channel works. So I think the first time I heard somebody in the national media or people on the timeline talking about Devin Booker as an MVP candidate was just two days ago. A lot of things have ramped up, or three days ago, a lot of things have ramped up um, with MVP conversations around Devin Booker in the last 24 to 48 hours because he had the big game against the Minnesota Timberwolves, and he just had 49 last night. Um, but a couple days ago, Isaiah Thomas, and I mean Zeke, not Short King, but NBA Hall of Fame, Isaiah Thomas said, let it be known that Ed Devin Booker um, should be an MVP conversations. Best record leading score has always been a part of the hashtag criteria. And then Devin Booker quoted that and said, appreciated IT, but the criteria changes depending on players' names. And why I don't completely disagree with Devin Booker here, I don't think it has a lot to do with the names. I don't think there is a national vendetta against Devin Booker or slash the Phoenix Suns, but I do think the criteria change from year to year. There are some years where it is the most dominant slash best player on the greatest team, and some years it's about the person having the best statistical season. And what I am realizing is the years that it is the best player on the best teams it usually coincide with nobody having a historically great, whether it be um, uh, advanced that season or counting that season, for example. So I referenced the Russell Westbrook MVP season a ton on this channel because, A, it was one of the best seasons for fans. It was just a crazy, crazy year. Um, and, and, B, I think that this really fits what I'm trying to say. So Russell Westbrook became the first player since Oscar Robertson to average a triple-double. It was a 30-point triple-double where his team exceeded. He won MVP, even though his team was a 60. Well, the best team in the league was the Warriors, who won 67 games this season. And Steph Curry was still averaging... 25 points per game, six and a half assists, and about five rebounds per, but he ended up six in MVP voting. So the Warriors won 67 games that season, y'all. Think about that. 67 and 15. And their best player ended up sixth in MVP voting. The criteria changed because Russell Westbrook was doing something we had never seen in the last 40, 50 years of basketball. This also is a bit of uh, voters for T because they were just 73 and 9 last season. Um, and he had been a, a unanimous MVP the year before that. And then it left a bad taste in our mouth when they ended up losing that finals. But either way, he was still putting up MVP caliber numbers on the best team in the league and ended up six also kevin durant was there forgot forgot to mention that and then we have the year after that and this was the james harden mvp award and guess what james harden was the best player on the best team and the reason why he did this because everybody beneath him whether it be lebron anthony davis uh, uh damian lillard russell westbrook everybody that got a vote None of them were having a crazy historical season. They were still having good seasons, very great seasons, but none of them were breaking all-time records. None of them over the advanced stats had, had the best season in NBA history. 
So James Harden still putting up really good stats. Say basically the similar stats to last season where he ended up number two and his team being, be being better and his team being the best in the league, he won the MVP award. And then we get to some of the Giannis awards and, and Giannis's, come on, let, Giannis's seasons were ridiculous. He, he was having a crazy historical season individually and they still were the number one seed. So he fit the both, both standards that you get. And then we get to last year where it's Jokic, um, and, and Jokic just had, I, I think it was the hardest, highest PER season of all time. And guess what? This season, he is better than he was last year. Um, so the criteria, as you can see, has changed. Sometimes it is the best player on the best teams, and sometimes it is somebody having a historically great season. It's unfortunate for Devin Booker that he fell into a season where Jokic and Embiid are both having historical seasons one way or another. I mean, Devin Booker in the last 25 games is averaging 30 points per game, five rebounds, six assists, 50% for the field, 36% for three, 88% for free throw line, and they are 21-4 and four in those 25 games, and they are 9-3 and three without Chris Paul. His resume is great, but it's still not going to be compared to those other top three dudes. I think it's okay to say that Devin Booker is having one of the best seasons in the league without saying that he should be top three in the MVP. One thing I do hate, about the NBA, and this might just be a basketball reference thing, is that his season might get lost in the grand scheme of things. This is Stephen Curry's basketball reference, by the way. Um, and you can see Steph Curry's great. You can see that he has his two MVPs. He's got his all, all his accolades up there. But one thing that that I wish was on basketball reference, or I guess an NBA thing, is the same thing we get on baseball reference. Baseball reference don't care, bro. A-Rod back in 2004 was 14th in MVP voting and that's on his award list. I think there are going to be so many NBA seasons that are lost to time because it's hard to put into perspective how dominant or how important that MVP award was. They say MVP 28, and I wouldn't go this far. I wouldn't go this far. But I would love to see on Basketball Reference or just in NBA in general, they're like, hey, Devin Booker finished fifth in MVP voting this season. And you can see that in 10 years to say that, oh, Devin Booker was really that man this season because I feel like context is definitely lost as we get further away from something or an event happening. They really got A-Rod 20, 28 in MVP award here. Jesus Christ, that's actually insane. The b basketball has one of the least amount of awards um, amongst the major sports, right? In baseball, you have basically a split between the conferences I guess football also has a split between the conference and I've been hearing a lot of people try to have the conversation of the NBA doing that because the NBA is becoming such a talented league I mean it always has been a talented league but more talented than ever before that it feels like we're we're neglecting some great players because they can't get these awards where in baseball and football you know you can you can divide it into different leagues you know overall I wouldn't even consider myself an NBA traditionalist I, I would say I'm NBA progressive I like the idea of changing rules every once in a while to see how it works but I don't really like the idea of splitting it down the middle and say that this is our Eastern Conference MVP our Western Conference MVP because I think it just loses its value just just a little bit because we will have those years where like, let's say rookie of the year, for example, the top three rookie of the year candidates this year are all in the Eastern Conference. We're going to have Josh Giddy win rookie of the year, which is fine. I guess it would be fine if he was a Western Conference rookie of the year. But that ain't really nothing compared with the, the top three are actually doing in the Eastern Conference. Another argument I guess is that basketball is a 15-man sport on the roster with football is 50-something people and the baseball was at 20-something people so there's a lot more candidates for these awards where in basketball there's only 30 point guards that get a start and there's only 30 centers that get a start so I don't like the idea of splitting it up uh, but I keep hearing people have that conversation um, so that Joel Embiid and Jokic both get recognized as the best players in the league the best seasons in the league but I'm okay with somebody has to come in second you know what I'm saying? We don't have to give everybody a participation. It's okay to have somebody come in second. Maybe Joel B comes a second for a second in a row. That fuels him next year. He's undisputed the, the NBA MVP. Or maybe he jumps the he jumps Jokic this season. Like, oh, last year him coming in second was the reason he ended up first this year. He used that in motivation. I'm okay with people coming in second, y'all. It has to happen. I treat this channel like my main channel now. Um, 2K is such a... a a terrible game. I, I was going, I'm going to keep it PG. It's such a terrible game that I just don't have fun recording. I do it to pay the bills. You feel me? Uh, but this is of course is what I'm more passionate about. So I'm going to try my hardest to treat this as a main channel since that I'm going to try to upload way more often. Um, some videos are going to be random rambles like today and some videos going to be recaps or some videos going to be lists and stuff like that. I just enjoy talking the game of basketball more than being on the sticks and making trades for people. Uh, I think I made my first 
I made my first rebuild in video in like 2K14. And we're in 2K22 and nothing has really changed. You know what I'm saying? I, I've, I've grown older. My interests have changed and my interest is basketball in general. It's unfortunate that 2K has a, a monopoly on the gaming section of basketball because I feel like there should be some people competing to beat them, but it won't happen. Um, so let me know in the comment section what you think. What, in your opinion, this I'm going to have a question of the day at the end of all these videos, if I remember. What is the hardest award for you to determine? Is it Rookie of the Year, Defense Player of the Year, MVP? Maybe you think somebody is in conversation with Tyler Hero for some reason. Because, matter of fact, if you think, you bugging if that's the case. Dog. Ain't nobody even mess with Tyler Hero. You feel me? You, we can be arguing about two through five, but nah. I think this year I'm going to treat it as in baseball where, like, instead of giving y'all my top three candidates of every award, I'm going 10 deep. Yeah. Yeah. So be looking out for the official Kenny for real uh, award ceremony. We're going to get some awards that aren't in the NBA, just a Kenny for real all-star type thing. Kenny for real MVPs. Who I got to think about that. All right. We got a lot to do.